Um, hello guys, good day. My name is Sherwin Kyle Rondina and I'm going to report the wise a next um let's have a short background about the wise a why stand for wrestler adult intelligence scale which is widely used under a test to assess the intelligence of adults the test was developed by david wrestler in 1955 and has seen been revised several times to incorporate new research and update the norms for the test scores next Let's have a background about David Wessler. Um, David Wessler was born in January 12, 19, 1896 in Lespidi, Ro Ro Romania. And he died in May 2, 1981 in New York. And he, and he was an American psychologist and inventor of several widely used intelligent tests for adults and children. Again, David Wessler was an American psychologist who developed several widely used intelligent tests, including the Wessler Bellevue, Wessler Bellevue Intelligence Scale, the Wessler Intelligence Scale for Children, and Wessler Adult Intelligence Scale. Um, he rejected the idea of an ideal mental age and defined normal intelligence as the main test score for all members of an age group represented by 100 on a standard scale. This test continued to be updated for contemporary use. Next is, um, before we go to the sub-test, um, uh, the current version of the Y is, is the version 4 which is include uh, several uh, subtests designed to measure the various cognitive abilities of the people, including napuchan yung verbal comprehension, perceptual reasoning, working memory, and processing speed. Tapos, yan, let's predict na po tayo dito sa dalawang two main subtests ng WISE 4, which is yung the verbal section and the uh, performance section I'm only gonna tackle all about the verbal section the next is yeah this is our the verbal section A to A first is similarities similarities stands for as is the ability to identify com commonalities between different concepts and to think ab abstractedly Next is the vocabulary. Vocabulary stands for measure, mes measures the breadth of an individual vocabulary and ability to find words. Next is the information. It is uh, evaluate general knowledge and acquire uh, information. Next is comprehension. Assess the ability to understand the social situation and to reason based on common sense yeah. from the word itself common sense naman yeah. arithmetic is a measure numerical reasoning and basic math skills then and then lastly overall the wise is a valuable tool for assessing an individual cognitive strength and weaknesses and it can be used to diagnose learning disabilities intellectual disabilities and other cognitive impairments However, it is important to remember that no single test can fully capture an individual intelligence or potential. And the result of the test should be interpreted in conjunction with other sources of information about the person being tested. And that's all for my report. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something. For more information, please visit Visit this reference attached in the presentation below. Thank you guys and have a good day. Good day everyone. My name is Mary Grace Imahina and my report is all about how to administer scoring and analysis. What is or the Wessler Adult Intelligence Scale? Wessler Adult Intelligence Scale or WISE 4? The Wessler Adult Intelligence Scale 4th edition 
is an individually administered norm refer reference test designed to measure cognitive ability in individuals from age 16 years to 19 years or 11 and 11 months. Field research for the WAIS-5 is ongoing throughout 2020. The WAIS-4 Yale Care IQ Index Score and sub Subtest Level Skill Score the fourth index score are verbal comprehension, perpetual reasoning, working memory, and processing speed. The WAIS-4 includes 10 score subtests and 5 supplemental subtests. The WAIS-4 may be administered in paper and pencil or web-based Q interactive format. In the year 1939, David Wesser decided that was she, he is not that this dissatisfied with the way of the Stanford Binet was set up. The next one is Wessler Original Test. The, there are two types of Wessler Original Test. The first one is the verbal scale and the second one is the performance scale. First, let's, let this, let define the verbal scale or IQ test item that rely heavily of word comprehension and usage. The first portion relies on word comprehension, where you use words and it's similar with standard Binet verbal scale that we're going through example the types of the question. Um, the next one is the performance scale. IQ test item that bypass verbal material focus on problem solving without any words. The second part is where he's getting very revolutionary. He introduced what is known is a performance scale. This concept is very popul popular even a currently intelligence test and he was the first guy he was the first guy to introduce the, the, the bypass who owes someone ability to, per, per, to the problem solving. Even if they don't necessarily have ability to use words, you can complete performance scale without having any prior existing knowledge. It is administered in individually, just like the Stanford Binet, there's a trained examiner, they're giving proper training, and it costs money to get the train, mm, and they license. When they go out, they take their little suitcase full of items, and they interview people one-on-one -on -one to attempt to give, I to attempt and give them both verbal and performance IQ. My example here is, this some some ano, something like object assemble. You're giving all these different pieces. They actually laid out in the predetermined manner of you have them to piece together. This is the the, the first picture that this is not a the ano assemble. The second picture is assemble. Um the examiner be timing you, seeing how you long it takes, you put it together, and then they score you. This is the how you match your score this section. The final picture show that this is the elephant that moved things around and limit and uh, no, ultimately you created this. Um, that's all my report. This is the reference. Thank you for listening. Good day, everyone. My name is Jeremiah Aranya, and now we're going to talk about the wise for interpretation. So here's the step-by-step -step how to interpret the wise interpretation. Actually, you have to first create a table with a information about the, the patient or the student who is taking the wise test. So if you're done making the table of all of the results, um, we have to determine the best way to summarize overall intellectual ability. So are we going to use FSIQ or GUI? So what's the difference between FSIQ and GAI? FSIQ is best as long as there's no too much variability. Um, FSIQ or full-scale IQ compromise all the subtests, while GAI or general ability index is only comprise that constitute the verbal comprehension index or the VCI and the PRI or the per perceptual reasoning index. GAI is composed of strong measures of general ability, therefore there is um, specially useful for estimating general 
ability for individuals who scores on memory tests such as WMI or the Working Memory Index or the Speed Test or the Processing Speed Index or the PSI deviate significantly from scores on verbal and nonverbal tasks. So to decide between FSIQ and GAI, subtract lowest index score from high, highest index score. So step 1A, look at four wise four indexes. If the standard score difference is 1.5 or less than 1.5 standard deviation or less than 23 points. If yes, um, FSIQ may be interpreted as a reliable and valid estimate of intellectual ability. If not, variation in indexes compromising the FSIQ is too great for the purpose of summarizing global intellectuals as a single score. Proceed to step 1B. Step 1B is the size um, if the size of the standard, di standard score difference between the VCI and the PRI or the Verbal Comprehension Index and the Perceptual Reasoning Index is less than 1.5 standard deviation or less than 23 points, then um, GAI may be calculated and interpreted as a reliable and valid measure of general intellectual ability. But if not, um, variation in indexes that compromise guy is considered too great for the purpose of summarizing global ability cannot be meaningfully conveyed as a single score. There were, ho however, have an exemption to this step 1B. Um, when you need the global score for diagnosis um, or placement decision, especially for gifted programs, then always interpreted, interpret an in overall score. Use clinical judgment or decide the best score to go, whether you're going to use FSIQ or GAI. Step two, um, determining whether each of the four Welch's indexes is unitary and thus interpretable. So we're going to make um, a table that includes the v VCI, PRI, WMI, P and PSI subtests. Then take down the highest scores then subtract them to the lowest scores and look for the differences the difference is less than five percent uh five points is the size of the difference is less than 1.5 standard deviation or less than five points um if yes the ability presumes to underline the index is unitary and may be interpreted but if not the difference is too large and the vci cannot be interpreted as representing a unitary value Ability. In this step also, we're going to check if our guy and CPI interpretable or the cognitive proficiency index. So if guy isn't interpretable, um, you can compare it with CPI. Go to step three. Um, but if the CPI is the size of the difference between WMI or the working memory index, um, and the PSI or the processing speed index is less than 1.5 standard deviation or less than um, 23 points. There are, if yes, the guy and the CPI are, are interpretable, go to step three. If no, guy and CPI comparison cannot be made. Step three, evaluate index level discrepancy comparison. Um, 3A, compare, um, performing a pairwise comparison is to determine if the absolute value of the score difference is statistically different, st statistically significant, sorry. For um, this step 3B, for all the significant difference between index score, the next step is to judge how rare the difference is in the general population. So if you're done evaluating the index level discrepancy, now let's go to the step four. Determine normative strengths and weaknesses in the index profile. So we're going to check or interpret the FSIQ or the full scale IQ or the guy or the general ability I, um, index um, and write it in a paragraph. Then include percentile rank of 95% confidence interval and descriptive category. Only unitary Welch's index are included in this analysis. If the index is greater than 115, the ability measures by the index is, 
is a normative strength. If it's less than 85, the ability measures by the index is a normative weakness. But between 85 and 115 inclusive, the ability measured by the index is within normal limits. So um, what are the wise descriptive categories? Um, less than 70 points is extremely low. 70 to 79 is borderline. Um, 80 to 89 is low average. 90 to 109 is average. 110 to 119 is high average. And 120 above is superior. So confidence interval, a range of score that allow us to consider error when interpreting our findings. Um, obtain scores is equal to two score plus error. Usually, either 90% of the confidence, confidence interval or 95% of the confidence interval. I'll, um, in my research, they like using a 95% confidence interval so it can be more certain I, that they capture the client score. So step five, evaluate personal strengths and weakness. weakness. So provide an interpretation of the VCI, PRI, PSI, and WMI. Again, what are those four? It is the um, verbal com comprehension index, perceptual reasoning index, um, processing speed index, and the working memory index. So again, include percentile rank of 95% um, CI or the confidence interval descriptive category. Step six, evaluate subtest level discrepancy comparison. In the same paragraph, provide an interpretation of the differences among index scores. Be sure to include a statement about the base rate. So this is where you're going to include the difference between um, the significant, the significant difference um, among the index scores. Um, if his of his or her PSI score was higher than her her VCI or the PRI um, is his PSI is much more higher than the WMI and so on. Be sure, yeah, be sure to include the statement above the base rate. So step four, um, step seven, and the last step is generate hypothesis about any fluctuations in the way in the wise for profile. So you're going to integrate psychomet psychometric data with your behavioral observation, client histories, and background information, and other source of information. Um, further testing may be necessary. And that would be all. Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. Our topic for today is background of WIST. By the way, I'm Cherry Gilbert. So, let's talk about background of WIST. What is the, uh, what is WIST? Uh, WIST is Westler Intelligence Scale for Children. So, David Whistler. David Whistler born in uh, January 12, 1986 and he died May 2, 1981 at New York. Uh, he is a psychologist and inventor of several widely used intelligence tests for, chi uh, for adults and children. Whistler studied at, at the city of New York uh, and, Colo and Columbia University and receiving his doctorate in 1925. So, uh, there are three different scales named as Whistler's Intelligence Scale. They are designed for adults, children, and preschoolers separately. Uh, they were directly needed as the previously designed IQ test became in, insufficient to measure the human int intelligence of different age group. Uh, 
the the wish is from 5 to 16 years old children so here's the whistler intelligence scale for children so now we will study about with which is intelligence scale for children so the current version of of this scale is WIST 5 and uh, this was given in 2014 so the test is that the test have five domains with different subset so the basic domains are some as WPPSI there are there are uh, verbal comprehension, uh, visual spatial, third one is fluid reasoning, and the fourth is working memory, and five is processing speed. Now, each one of them have different subset. Uh, let's talk about first... Uh, First, we're going to know about the tests in verbal comprehension. The tests are similarities, vocabulary, vocabulary information, vocabulary and information comprehension. Now, you can see the verbal comprehension has the test which helps the psychologists to analyze and assess the different domain. Now, verbal comprehension has similarity and moving on the visual spatial, the, the second one is the visual spatial test, me, test measures different domains of its, its own kind which are visual puzzles and black design. Black design. Next one is the third is fluid reasoning. Fluid reasoning tests. Uh, these tests measure different domains like figure weights, matrix reasoning, picture, picture concept, and last one is arithmetic. The part one is uh, working memory, which ma in working memory, e it measures uh, picture span, di digit span, and letter number. Next one is, uh, last is processing speed. Uh, it measures coding, symbol, uh, symbol search cancellations, uh, and so there are the dif uh, these are all the different the different tests which we has for children age from uh, five to sixteen years old. So so uh, what is the importance of this Whistler intelligence scale for children? For, for children, uh, we de determine a child's intellectual capabilities or capabilities. It is frequently used to diagnose learning differences such as ADD or ADHD. Uh, this test also helps to assess trends in order to determine gifted children. The WIST, uh, WIST test in, indicates our, I, or indices the our verbal comprehension, uh, perceptual reasoning, working memory, and processing speed. The, sub, the subsets allows precise modeling of a child's intellectual capabilities and readiness for learners. So, that's uh that's the about the background of wis intelligence or whistler 
Whistler Intelligence Scale for Children. So, uh, that's all. That's all. Thank you for listening. So, here my, uh, here my reference for my report. So, good day. My name is Neil Perim Abit and I will report on how to administer scoring analysis using WIS test. So, what is the purpose of WIS test? And when is WIS test being used? So, the purpose of WIS test is to assess if a child is intelligent or gifted. So, when do we use this type of test, this WIS test? So, we use this WIS test to, to see if a child is qualified for admissions in gifted programs for, of, from private schools. So basically, in private schools, they offer gifted programs in which gifted children are not required or they can basically skip years based on their IQ because they believe that these children with a high IQ who are gifted, they can learn, they can learn what is being taught at school by their own so next so how do we administer this test so psychologists give this type of iq test ranging from 60 to i6 to 16 years old children so this wish test can be administered or given through online or could be even given face to face so this uh, wish test um it could take up to 60 to 80 minutes to complete depending on the number of primary and secondary sub tests so as i was uh, researching on this topic i also have learned about the advertisements or about the products that uh, is being advertised about this test so basically there are websites like www.testingmom that uh, gives out uh, flashcards so what are these flashcards so basically they think that with these flashcards children can help prepare for the upcoming WIS test in the future but unfortunately Preparing for the WIS test is have being heavily debated on because uh, WIS test, I, the questions in the WIS test is not typically memorized, but it, uh, it uh, measures the cognitive abilities of a child and arithmetic abilities. So, next, next would be the 10 primary scale or full scale IQ subtest types of the WISC-5 test. So, my co-reporter Cherry Gilbert has already reported but I will still give you a brief description about this. So, first, verbal comprehension. So, this is how the child finds similarities within words or word patterns. So, verbal comprehension vocabulary is the child's knowledge about words so next is visual spatial block design which is the nonverbal problem solving skills and uh, next is fluid reasoning matrix reasoning which is uh, adaptive reasoning or the it could uh, re reasoning depending on the situation so next is fluid reasoning, figure weights. This is the reasoning that uh, aims to balance a situation. Next is working memory, digit span. This is the ability of a child to remember um, certain numbers and repeat it back. So working memory, picture span, it is the same with 
digit span, the only difference is with picture span, we have imagery or visual graphics. So, next we have processing speed, symbol search. Um, it is how fast uh, a child sees uh, visual perception, proce processing speed coding, how a child fastly sees visual sequences. Visual spatial or visual and visual spatial. This is how a child. Um, this is how a child answers a problem just by observation. So, how do we score with test? So there are a lot of ways to score with test. There is a scoring we could score with test by age. For example, 6 to 10 years old have 80 to 90 average IQ. Or we could have by country. For example, China has this 100 IQ, average IQ. Or India has this 80 to 90 average IQ. It could be that. But today, we'll be sticking to Comparing scores from two children who took the test within four months of their birthday. So, in WIS test, in scoring WIS test, we use age brands. So, for example, Sherwin, who is six years old, born in October, and will be taking, who will be taking the test in December, would be represented as 6'2". So, why 6'2"? 6, 6 is the age of the child. And two is the time that the child will take the test away from his birthday. So, how do we analyze store scores from WIS test? So, once a score norm is created, once the pilot test has been done, and we have now have standardized scores, we will now compare the scores obtained versus the standardized scores so this is what I'm talking about for example does the child of 6 years old had the average IQ of 90 to 109 so in this uh, interpretation it means the students who test in this range are average or may not, may not or may have been able to easily keep up with school so it means that uh, even with this test they they cannot say if uh, uh, this child will be able to struggle or not struggle in this school so and we also have the highly gifted who are exceptionally gifted who should be in gifted programs as i have said earlier so that's that. So we have the age groups, with five age groups, years and months. So as I have said earlier, we will compare the two child two children's test scores between who took the test within their four months of their birth date. So for example, a child six years of age who took the test within the within his birth month versus a child who is 6 years of age also, but who took the test 3 months after his uh, birth date. So, that's how we compare. Within 4 months, for example, this 6-4 six, uh, six, and this 6-7. All of these are examples of, uh, of those children who took the test within 4 months of their Birth month. Now let's talk about the WISC WISC five interpretation. So in WISC WISC five we have the um, full scale IQ again, same with the WISE for test. Um, sub tests are drawn from five areas of cognitive cognitive ability, which are the VCI, VSI, FRI, WMI, and PSI. 
So it is the Verbal Comprehension Index, Visual Spatial Index, Fluid Reasoning Index, Working Memory Index, and the Processing Speed Index. Sample's FSIQ score is in the extremely high range when compared to other children her age. FSIQ is equivalent to 132. His PR or the perceptual reasoning is around 98 points and his confidence interval is ranges from 125 to 136 points. Consider additional source of information may not be reflected in this in the score of this assessment. So verbal comprehension index measures ability to access and apply acquired work knowledge. High scores in this area indicates as well a well-developed verbal reasoning system with strong word knowledge acquisitions, effective information retrieval, good ability to reason and sol solve verbal problems, and effective communication of knowledge. So there are two sub-tests sub of BSI. Um, number one is the block design, or which is he or she will view a model and or picture and use two color blocks to, to recreate the design. And the second one is the visual puzzle, which requires her to view the completed puzzle and select three response options that together will reconstruct the puzzle. Um, second one is the fluid reasoning index, a measure the ability to determine detect the underlying perception relationship among visual objects and use reasoning to identify and apply rules. Required inductive and quantitative reasoning, broad visual intelligence, simultaneous processing, and abstract thinking. High score indicate a well-developed ability to abstract conceptual information from visual details and to effectively apply that knowledge. While subtests in both FRI and VSI includes Visual stimuli, um, fluid reasoning can be solved by logic where you, um, visual spatial subtests requ requires visual spatial processing. So there are two subtests in the FRI. Number one is the matrix reasoning um, requires her to view an incomplete matrix or series of and select the response option that complete the matrix or the series. So here's the example. So here's the example of that. And the second one is figure weight. She view a scale with the missing weights and identifies the response options that would keep the scale balanced. So here's the, op um, here's the example of the um, figure weight test of WISC of WISC 5. Um, the next one is the working memory index. Um, it measures ability to register, maintain, and manipulate visual and auditory information in conscious awareness, which requires attention and concentration as well as visual and auditory discrimination. High scores indicate as a well-developed ability to identify visual and auditory information, maintain it temporar um, temporary storage, and resequence it for use in problem solving. She can easily recall and sequence series of pictures and list of numbers. WMI is derived from two subtests. Number one is picture span, required to memorize one or more pictures presented on a stimulus page and then identify the correct pictures from option on the response page. And then the second one is digit, digit span, listen to sequence of numbers read aloud and call them in the name in the same order reverse order and ascending order so then the last one is the processing speed index measures speed and accur accuracy of visual identification making decision making and decision implementation its performance is related to visual scanning visual discrimination serve them visual memory visual motor coordination and concentration it assesses her ability to rapidly identify, register, and implement decisions about visual stimuli. High score indicate a well-developed ability to rapidly identify visual information to make quick and accurate decisions and to rapidly implement, implement those decisions. So the PSI is derived from two subtests. Number one is symbolic search. 
um, scan a group of symbols and indicate if the target symbol was presented just like this um, sample here. And the next one is the coding. Um, use a key to copy symbols that corresponds with numbers. So um, there are certain numbers that corresponds certain um, symbols, then there'll be some kind of a message that he or she will have to identify. And that will be all. Thank you.